Hi there, I'm Mr. Orr, and today we are talking about section 7.2 in our textbook. This is on this is uh, geometry uh, reflections. So let's talk first about a reflection. Um, is if you have a figure, let's do something like this and this. All right, this figure has a line of symmetry <clears throat> because if I reflect it across that line of symmetry, I get the same shape on the other side. <coughs> okay, So it's just a flip, but there are no other lines of symmetry. There's nowhere else on here, across here or anywhere else, that I can draw it, that I can flip it and have it look exactly like itself. <clears throat> so we have reflections that reflect in lines of symmetry. Uh, a reflection is an isometry, and that's a theorem here, 7.1. So, let's take a look for a moment at lines of symmetry. Um, if I have a figure that is a hexagon, wait a minute, one, two, three, four, yeah, let's say a hexagon. Let me see if I can draw this reasonably well here, which is always a challenge for me. <coughs> All right, now, <clears throat> this one actually has four, uh, two lines of symmetry. Here's one, because if I flip it across, it will map onto itself, as we say. It will fold onto itself. The other one is here, because if I do the same thing, if my drawing was a little bit better, you'd see it, but if I take this and flip it across here, <clears throat> it's going to look like the bottom half. It's going to map onto the bottom one exactly. <clears throat> so, those are lines of symmetry, uh, and a figure can have any number of different lines of symmetry. <laughs> so, um, Think of a triangle has, depending on the triangle, of course, it has to be uh, equilateral, at least isosceles, that's going to have one line of symmetry. But if you think in terms of a, let's see, um, a hexagon is actually going to have six lines of symmetry. I'm not sure I can draw a really good hexagon, but I'll try. Here's one, two, three, four, five, six. That's a really terrible regular hexagon, but let me see if I can fix it a little bit here. Um, let's go this way and this way. All right, it's still pretty bad, but we'll go with it. Now, um, this one has a line of symmetry through here, <clears throat> a line of symmetry through here, but it also has a line of symmetry through these two, like this, and through these two like this, and I wish my drawing was better, <clears throat> and then it has also, it has these two and these two. <clears throat> so that is one, two, three, four, five, six. <clears throat> and then we get around to repeating those lines on the other side. Six lines of symmetry. All right, so it depends on the figure. Um, now, there are a couple of things here that I want to be sure that we take a look at. Um, a reflection in an axis. Let me bring this down for a moment. If you reflect in an axis or across an axis, here's what you're going to have. Let me find an eraser here. Um, so if I have a point here, and let's say that point is 3, 4, if I reflect that in the y-axis, it is going to come over here, and it's going to be negative 3, 4. And that's a reflection in the y-axis. If I want to take that point and now reflect it in the x-axis, it's going to come down here. And notice it's an equal distance. In this case, this was over 3, so it's over 3 this way. This was up 4, so this one is down 4. <clears throat> this is a reflection in the x-axis, and it goes from here to here. Now, it's worth noting, this point originally was 3, 4. This point over here is negative 3, 4. <clears throat> so, in other words, the y value stayed the same. The x value changed sign. So a reflection in the y-axis, if this started out as x, y, this is negative x, y. We're going to come back to this quite a bit later on in the chapter. <clears throat> if I then take this, negative 3, 4, 
and bring it down here, it's now negative 3, negative 4. So the original went from, <coughs> let's see, actually it's going to be easier to explain if I go over to the other side. Let's do it over here. This is 3, 4. This comes down to 3, negative 4. Okay, that negative didn't show up, so let me move it. 3, negative 4. All right. So <clears throat> the difference here is the y value became negative. So if that was x, y, this is x, negative y. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> so a reflection acro across the y-axis gave me an opposite x. A reflection across the x-axis gave me an opposite y. <clears throat> that is to say, in numbers, if I had x, y, and I reflected it across the y-axis, I have negative x, y. <clears throat> so 3, 4 to negative 3, 4. If I have 3, 4 or x, y, and I reflect it across the x-axis, then I get the same x value, but a negative y value. So I go from 3, 4 to 3, negative 4. And that will get more significant <clears throat> as we move on through this chapter. There is another thing that I want to show you, <clears throat> and that has to do with... Um, you are here to pretend that you are a telephone line person working in a rural area and you need to get a telephone line. Um, you need to plant a pole that gets a telephone line <clears throat> to two different houses <clears throat> and gives the least and uses the least amount of telephone wire. <laughs> so, Here's what we want. Um, again, on here, let's say we have a house. This is our rural road, Road X, X Avenue. Okay? And we have a point, let's say, at three, a house at three, four. Okay? And let's say we have another house uh, over here at uh, 10, 6. Okay? 10, 6. <coughs> and three, four. Now, I, again, <clears throat> uh, actually, I'm going to make this, I'm going to change that a little bit. I'm going to make it, um, I'm going to make it four, uh, let's see, I'm going to make it four, two. Uh, you'll see why. I just want it to come out a little bit more nicely so I don't have fractions in this particular situation. Now, <clears throat> what I have to do here <coughs> In order to find the right, <clears throat> the right um, place to put the telephone pole along the road, so I use the least amount of wire getting to these two houses, <clears throat> what I'm going to do is reflect this one in the x-axis, down to here. Then I'm going to connect <coughs> that point with my original <coughs> up here house, and what I find, <clears throat> well, I still came out with a fraction, but that's okay. <clears throat> what I find here is um, the optimum place to put the pole is right there, <clears throat> okay? Because this distance is the same as, so I'm going to mark that the same as that, <clears throat> and therefore I have covered the same distance but by putting the pole right here, I have found the place if I wire from here to here and wire from here to here, I will use the least amount of telephone wire. All right. Um, I wonder if perhaps I should do <clears throat> one more of those because they can be a little bit confusing. Um, <clears throat> so let's see. Let's put a couple of points up here. Um, let's put 1, 5, and 7, 1. So let's go 1, 5, and 7, 1. <laughs> now, again, in order to find the place to put the pole along here, I take this one and reflect it in the x-axis. <laughs> so now it was up 5, now it's down 5. Now I connect those two points like this, and what I find is that the place I want to put the pole is right here at 6, 0. So that would give me a wire going from that pole to this house over here, and it would give me a wire from that pole to this house, and believe it or not, 
although it doesn't exactly look like what you'd expect, it is in fact the shortest amount of wire that I would have to use. To connect this house with this house, I put the pole right there. All right, I think that's sufficient for this section. Uh, we will be moving on to rotations in the next section.